What's going on, everybody? Welcome to week nine picks, NFL picks uh, show with uh, myself and Rody. We are going to be going through the week nine slate, talking about our favorite plays. This is a pretty spread out slate. I think even ownership wise, you're going to see some of that. So there's a lot of games that I think are interesting to target. And uh, I want to talk through those, see if I can maybe narrow down my list because I've got like teams I'm trying to stack right now, which is just too many. Um, Rody, what are your thoughts on this week and how you've been doing, man? Oh man, I've been doing good. Uh, like doing these pick videos and stuff that we do. So, yeah, I mean, that's an interesting week. I'm going to be at the Packers in the in the in the Detroit game this week. So I'm going to do a little bit lighter lineups. No MME, probably just play my power sweep. Some of my bigger lineups, like a Wildcat lineup, but have to really decide here who I want to stack with this week with it. Mm-hmm. You know, I do don't mind even the Green Bay side of that game. So I might I might have to throw a lineup in with that stack. So. I'm, I'm into that one too. So that, that's actually like just to get us started off real quick. Uh, I've got Green Bay and Detroit. I, I, I'm having a hard time ranking my interest in these. I'm interested in both the Buffalo and Miami offenses alone more than a full game stack. Seattle, Arizona, Vegas, and the, and Jacksonville, Cincinnati, just as a, as a, as a team I'm interested in. And then the Chargers Atlanta are sort of my main, my main things. And I'm trying to narrow it down. I think the Chargers Atlanta might be, end up being where I do the most business. How about you for game stacks and a quick look? Yeah, I definitely like that Buffalo side. Um, I've been playing some Jets cheap pieces. I mean, you could probably get an affordable stack there. I know maybe you don't want to game stack it, but like they have had some decent guys go off this year at random times, but they also haven't. Um, yeah, the Green Bay Detroit game, I'll probably stack Cincinnati. I like with no run back. I don't mind doing some of that a little bit this week. Um, uh, definitely the Chargers because this is one of my favorite teams. This would be the week like they would should smash, right? right? You think Keenan Allen, you think Mike Williams, but they don't have those guys this week. So it looks like some of those re- cheaper receivers are maybe at Eifert might not get much ownership as you know Eckler's going to come in pretty high owned, I think. Mm-hmm. But like you can get some of those other pieces in that game pretty cheap. I think that might be a good game stack. I keep running. Last time I had my Burrow stack, I ran it back with some Atlanta guys that dudded. But, you know, I'm thinking, you know, Pitts is starting to look better a little bit. I think he's good to go, you know, so may- maybe he's a solid run back in that game too. Um, a-, a sneakier one maybe is the Seattle game in Arizona. I don't know how sneaky it's going to be, but like you said, you kind of like a lot of these games this week. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, Hopkins might be a little chalky, but, you know, you got DK and Lockett on the other side of the stack. Rondell Moore coming in at 5% there. He's not bad. You know, I, I-, I like his explosiveness, and he's going to break one one of these days, you know, mm-hmm. so. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's kind of a lot of good games you can play this week, I think, and a few forgotten ones. So, yeah, um, I'm gonna have to pause this video really quickly. Yeah, picking it back up, guys. Sorry about that. It's you know, the, I think we're both on that there's a number of stacks that we're strongly considering this week, and for various reasons, it just seems like a more spread out week in general. If you had to marry yourself to any of them, is there anyone that you feel especially strongly about? I mean, I think the Chargers is pretty interesting, especially with the value there, but I think it's going to have some ownership. So what are, what are your thoughts in terms of if you had to pick just one? Yeah, if I had to pick just one, I do like the Chargers stack the best. Um, yeah, I, I'd say that one. And if you want to go sneakier, maybe the Arizona-Seattle game. I'm kind of starting to get picked up on that one a little bit more. Yeah, I actually don't know how. I think they're both going to have similar, like some some pretty decent ownership there. Yeah. But I'm sort of I'm sort of with you. And um, boy, it seems like everybody I do a show with these these days says I look out for that sneaky uh, Rams Tampa Bay game at the end. Um, but I personally don't have much exposure to that right now. Uh, all right, let's talk about quarterbacks, which is going to go along with our stacks here. Um, like I'll just start real quick and the Mariota, I get the pricing thing. They're still, especially if quarter back, I think they're going to run the ball a little bit more. I actually like the Rogers idea in, uh, in, in the, in, in the dome and running it back with St. Brown, playing him with either Lazard or Dobbs or both. I think that's totally reasonable. You could let me know your thoughts. Cause you're, uh, you're the guy, Robert, uh, I like yeah. both of the cheapos in the L- Las Vegas Jacksonville game, um, I don't know how much Gino I'm going to end up with, but I am interested in that. But one thing I do like is I like the idea of getting a, paying up a little bit for Herbert. I think he's going to be a little bit lower on in, the, in that stack. And I like the idea of playing up for Murray if I was going to play the Arizona Seattle. So that's sort of the guys I'm looking at, along with the obvious Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, are both really good plays. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like I like the, all the same guys right there. Herbert's a good spend up. I think he's coming in at 7%. You know, I think a little bit more, but I, yeah, I didn't really realize how much cheap some of these guys are like Lawrence five, two and, 
And, you know, you know, even Fields, a running quarterback against Miami in that game, we yeah. didn't talk about that game. That's another um, one. Yeah. Some, but he, he's starting to look a little bit better, I think. And only 5-3 for a rushing quarterback upside. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, usually you see those guys like Josh Allen, 8,500, or you got Kyle Murray yeah. in the 7Ks, you know, where he'll, he'll ru- ru- rush a couple of touchdowns in, too, and get a lot of rushing yards. So that's a cheap option, maybe a skinny stack in that game or something, because we got some explosive weapons on the Miami side. I didn't really think about that or see that earlier but yeah there's a lot of 5k guys Mariota, you know gino is still 5k it's like you're really going to be able to get some stacks in with your quarterback uh, Mm -hmm. this week here so absolutely and and uh yeah i know it sounds like we're spreading out a little bit guys but it's you know it's still early it's still we still don't have all the information for the week yet and i think there are just more viable ones this week um i do think that the one i probably would be most overweight on is that herbert play um i could see myself having like 20 plus percent of them so here's an interesting running back week. I, everybody I really want to play. I don't even think like I'm going to end up doing the Eckler thing. I don't think I'm going to end up doing Aaron Jones and Josh Jacobs. I think I'm just staying in the 6K range. And I'm happy to play some of the lower owned guys. The Fournette, um, Kenneth Walker will be a little bit lower owned than, than the other ones at the top. Mostert should be lower owned. So I like that, especially if uh, we have no, um, uh, if Jeff Wilson is, isn't able to suit up. Um, and Deontay Foreman would be my, my gamble down low. Um, then I, other than that though, I, I, I do like all of ATN Stevenson and Mixon. I just will probably be playing three running backs and it'll probably include one of these other guys like the most stirred at lower ownership, like the Foreman, something like that, just to get off the board. How about you? Yeah, that's interesting. I, I really like Eckler and I don't mind stacking him up with Herbert. So I do that all the time because I mean, he's getting like 12 targets, like crazy double digit target share and in, in receptions um etn's a guy that i don't mind in that jacksonville game i think i don't think i'm gonna stack that game even though the quarterbacks are cheap but i really like pieces of that game um etn's been a guy that's got some explosive upside i didn't realize joe mixon was only 6500 yeah Am I seeing this right wow this is nuts what a week what a slate he hasn't been very good this year for what it's worth yeah he's had, he, yeah but he just has that explosive upside to get he yeah. could score three touchdowns but yep. they've been passing on the red zone or they haven't, they've been struggling in the red zone, like down on the five yard line, they get stuff stuffed and then they try throwing it or something. So Mixon's not been getting those, that touchdown. Ramon Stevenson, he, he could have a big game today. Um, or not today, it was Sunday. Um, he could have a big game against Indy, you know, um, just keep pounding yards. That's a slow paced game that fits him. Well, I do like Kenneth Walker He'd be kind of the run back. I, I don't mind in that Seattle Arizona game to Murray. We talked about, um, I don't know if, I don't think you said Deion Jackson should be getting some work now on the other side of the indie game. I have zero interest in whatsoever. You don't like, you don't like him at five, two with in a nothing moving game. How is it like, he's, he's not he's that much cheaper. He's someone he's getting, he have, have to be, he'd have work, to be though, 5K. for me to consider him. He's got to be considered at five K. He's just so cheap. Think about it. He's, he's 800 cheaper than a guy who's going to get every touch who we already know and actually can be productive because he scored three touchdowns last week in Deontay, whatever. Um, he's also going to have more ownership, my guess, than, than those guys are. Um, even though the projections are very all over the place between Sheets, Goldie, and uh, and uh, Saberson. Yeah, uh, I think it's just something we should watch going into Sunday where he ends up with the projections are kind of all over the place, I agree. It's just um, weird because with Taylor, you have the worst rushing attack in football against a team that's going to stop the run. I, I really don't see how he... He, he's a, he's only a thousand cheaper than these guys who are going to put up twenties and thirties and plus. I, and I don't, I just don't know his route to get there. I really don't. So I'm, I'm off of him, but I, but I certainly understand it. I, I looked it right away. I wanted to at 4k, I would have had a different conversation because then it's a significant enough savings. Whereas if I'm only saving 20% on the salary, I, I think I'd rather just jump up and play these guys. That's why I'm skipping the uh, Jacob Zeckler Jones most uh, part for the most route for the, uh, for the most part. But yeah, I agree. I think running backs very spread out. I mean, the ownerships are really high on some of these guys, but I think it's going to level out a little bit here by the end of the week or yeah. end of, towards the weekend a little bit. Some of these guys will pick up some steam here. I think you got Gibson with no JD McKissick in too, right? And uh, I know Brian. Robinson. Well, Gibson, it's been Brian Robinson who gets. Yeah, the, it's been Brian the Robinson, but they were they were still mentioning something there in that game. So Gibson's getting more projection than Brian Robinson. So because I think he's in the past he's getting pat yeah, some pass more pass work than Brian Robinson in that game. Yeah. So it's like the Swift thing. It's the they're basically doing the same thing. They're getting so much less of the carries. It's just hard for me to go there. 
Yeah, Swift and Jamal. You got AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones too. Like, yep. I'm still waiting for the Aaron Jones week or AJ Dillon week, but I mean, it's it feels yep. like it's never gonna come. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna do the overweight underweight when we move over to receiver because I, I it's I know it's hard when we give out just a bunch of names. I will probably be end up being right around the field with Tyreek. I'll be well under on Diggs probably. I'll be well over on Hopkins. I'll be uh, probably near the field with with Godwin. I'll probably be a little bit above the field on Cup. And then I'll be, again, Lockett more going to be a part of those stacks. So they're pro- I'm probably going to be a little bit over on those guys. I'm going to be over on Amon Ra and Palmer. And then I'm going to be pretty much under on everybody else who's projected to have ownership outside of Drake London. And uh, I think I will I will get some Terry McLaurin and some Dobbs and some Mooney, but everybody else I'm sort of okay to be under with uh, after the names I mentioned. How about you? Who are you looking at this week? Yeah, I mean, Alan Lazard's still questionable. He could be back for that Packers game. Um, you know, you got to figure out which receiver for the Chargers we like. I mean, Carter's cheap at 4-3. He's not showing ownership as of right now, so he could be a guy you could stack with. I think he's going to be really – I think he's going to – because he's 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 questionable now. He got downgraded today. Okay. Um, but right. I think he's, I think he's going to be the – my guess is that if he plays, he'll be the, the most popular. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'd watch ownership on that one, too. But um, I do really like Josh Palmer. I mean, he's going to be high owned. It looks like a little bit, too. But, I mean, he, he dumps off the ball to Palmer a lot. Um, yeah, and then Lockett, DJ Moore combination. They're going to be mid-owned. I, I don't mind DK Metcalf. I get a little bit more of him usually than Lockett. Um, I'm on in that run back in the Green Bay stack. I like um who i just had a guy and uh where did he go where did he go oh rondell moore and that uh arizona game too is the other guy i was looking for at low ownership maybe a pivot off there maybe he gets some more work i do like hopkins as well though um i definitely don't mind that yeah yeah and then really i don't (laughs) whatever you're kind of stacking a little bit you know jalen waddle falls down there a little bit in that miami game chicago game but like i've always liked him yeah, I like over Hill a little bit more explosive upside. It's kind of going through the list here. Yeah, I mean, really, there's just a lot of flyer guys out there. You know, a guy in the Green Bay game to watch. I think Josh Reynolds still questionable. Khalif Raymond maybe is a cheap 4K guy. Um, he might get a bump in ownership over Amon if you want to stack that game in multiple ways. Um, that's kind of where I'm going. Mm-hmm. Makes a lot of sense. All right, let's talk about some tight ends. Um, I do like this price for Higby. This this is going to be another one that feels like roulette because you've got so many guys in that 3K to, third, to whatever range. Higby, I like. I like Pitts a lot. I like Tunyon in those stacks. I'm not going to play any Gerald Everett because I would just rather, much rather play Pitts. The guy who I might end up being the most on is Tyler Conklin. I have zero idea why he's not projecting like these other guys. I don't mind Hayden Hurst and Ingram, by the way, if, you know, in those game stacks, especially, but Tyler Conklin has, what does he have? Uh, three g- games over this year of over nine targets. He had 10 catches last week, right? Um, I have no idea why he's projected so low. And if we, if you're going to play that Buffalo game, play Conklin. And by the way, I would go even a step further. I think you could play Conklin and Knox just to get off of any potential Buffalo chalk. And then you run the, the normal digs and, and Allen, but you've got a different build kind of like that idea. Um, and I, I, I got that. So right now I, I do, I do like all the, the chalkier guys, but I think Conklin's not getting the ownership he should. And he is going to be the one I marry myself to, if that's going to be the case, I will also be overweight Hayden Hurst and Evan Ingram and probably just hold my breath and skip the Tanya and uh, Gerald Everett. And ugh, I like Higby a lot, but I, I might have to even consider fading that if I want to play so much Conklin. Yeah, I mean, what do you got, Road? That's that's pretty good. I like that. Conklin's pretty cheap play, uh, for sure. And the Knox call is really good. I mean, you, you hit it pretty spot on, actually. Like Knox would have been a guy that I'm really high on. Uh, Con- Conklin's stats do look really well. I mean, for games for targets, um, he's definitely getting there. And um, Robert Tony, you mentioned too as well. He's getting a little bit more chalkier, but I like him in that Green Bay stack. He's another cheap three eight guy. Higby's also three seven gets a lot of work, you know. Maybe a guy that's getting less talked about in the Arizona Seattle game. Maybe Zach Ertz. He got a lot of red zone looks early on in the year, but he's been a little lacking lately. I do like Everett. I know you didn't like him in that game, but I don't mind that pairing. And then Pitts as well. But Pitts is getting a little bit of ownership. He's starting to look really good. Mm-hmm. So and, and another guy at two nine. We don't want to forget about Noah Fant was getting some work there for a minute, but 
Will Disley's still there, and there's some other options in there. Um, yeah, and then uh, is Tampa Bay got anybody back, or is it Kate Otten still? It's Otten. Okay, I don't mind that play. There's a lot of cheap tight ends here. I don't mind at 3K, Kate Otten, Hunter Henry, just flyer guys, and Mike Gusecki at 4K in that game. He gets a lot of – I like that there. at low ownership too. Yeah, low on- – yeah, I'm just kind of going low to ownership. The only reason I like Kate Otten some is because – Tom Barry checks down the tight or throws it across the tight ends all the Absolutely. time. And he does it by the goal. Constantly. Goal. Constantly. I bet he misses. I bet you misses his old buddy Gronk right about now. Yeah, he's missing Gronk right now. So if you're doing a bunch of lineups this week, guys, I wouldn't mind sprinkling some of those guys that I really like with high upside. Like they could get 14 to 15 points. That might be all you need on a slate from your tight end, to be honest with you. Yeah, and I think a bunch um, of guys are going to be right in that that one touchdown plus a few catches range. Like yeah, the, one touchdown and a few catches, and this you got to find that tight end this week. You know, I didn't even mention T.J. Hawkinson on that new team. I mean, we'll see what they're going to do with him. But yeah, I was uh, thinking that, about that, but I feel like maybe one week away. Yeah, one week away. But if you want to catch an earlier side, maybe play him. Um, you know, Hawkinson might come out and make a statement that he wants to look good this year. He's mm-hmm. I seen some videos. He looks pretty good there in Minnesota and. Cousins does chuck it a lot, but, you know, they got a lot of weapons in that team. You know, Cook, Jefferson, Thielen, Hawk yep. now. That offense is kind of should should start clicking, hopefully, maybe. We'll see. Somehow, they're, somehow they've only lost one game, and I don't even know how that's possible. But yeah, I crazy. do think the Hawkinson move was a good move for them. I like I like them having a – I think he's a really legitimately good tight end. Yeah, uh, for sure. So, all right, as far as defenses go, we know we tend to want to uh, – you know, go cheaper here. I think that you can always take a, a cheap Carolina against a Buffalo, I'm sorry, against a Cincinnati team that we know Burrow will take sacks and we know he's going to throw the, throw some picks. That's just, we know he's going to do it. Um, and I think that, you know, you could even think about the Jets at the all the way minimum if you need it, but I probably would prefer to play Washington. And I also think both sides of the Arizona Seattle are in play for similar reasons. You can get sacks and then, and then my other my spend ish up would be the Bucks against my Rams just because uh, the Rams have looked really really bad offensively. How about you? I don't. Yeah, I don't mind all those calls. You know, the Bucks versus the Rams are great out as a really top play, really. Um, and then, but the Bucks have struggled too. They're trying to still figure it out, you know, as well. But yeah, I usually tend to go with the cheap defense. You know, the Panthers grayed out pretty well here, eleven percent. It looks like people are playing the Washington Commanders. I think. Ch- one of their good uh, Young's back around the defensive line, right? This yep. week, so yep. cause you know Cousins takes a lot of sacks and forces the ball all the time. Yep. So you know we could see some you know good good points there for the Commanders at two four. So I don't mind those two three two four defense. Um, you know Patriots are probably in a good matchup against a spend for a spend up defense uh, against the Colts. They got that rookie still starting, right? No Hines mm-hmm. anymore. No Jonathan Taylor. Mm-hmm. So, so they got kind of. You know, I, I'd say they're a good defense to play. Yeah, and, if I can get to them, that's, that's who I would prefer too. Yeah, I, I don't mind. I don't mind the Patriots' defense. So they have looked good this year. Pick six. They 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 they're my defense in my dynasty league. So like, I have to hope they score some points this week. Yeah. <laughs> um. Besides that, yeah, the, those are the top ones. I'll spread it out with. Um. You know, if I do really need to do a Jets defense, I might. I might, but I, I think I can get to the two, three, or two, four ones that I really like. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, sounds good to me. Um, all right, any anything we didn't touch on, Rody, of a game that maybe either we we either something we either missed or something you want to highlight that you really really like this week? You keep mentioning the Seattle Arizona, and I'm definitely taking note of that. I have a feeling that game ends up being fairly chalky ish, but I think if you play the Kyler as a quarterback side of it, it probably won't be. And if you use Rondell Moore, it certainly won't be. So I kind of like that one that you mentioned. Yeah, I think I like the Rondell Moore, DK Metcalf pieces out of that or the the Kenneth Walker. I think he's going to get a little bit forgotten about this week. I mean, he's getting some ownership right now, but, I mean, I think, man, these ownership numbers are just so big for these running backs. But, I mean, I guess people are going to be playing three running backs a lot this week, so mm-hmm. that makes sense. But, yeah, Kenneth Walker, Metcalf, Rondell Moore, I like pieces in that game. And then I don't like the Kyle, mind that uh, Kyler Murray to Zach or it's type tight end stack. So I can get different with that stack. I think mm-hmm. um, I'll have a big lineup in that game. I just don't know how I'm going to stack it up quite yet, but I like pieces in that game quite a bit. Yeah. And I guess my, my, my other weird hot take is if Buffalo wins anybody the money this week, it's going to be Tyler Conklin in that lineup. <laughs> um, yeah, I get up with Tyler Conklin. I think that's my Buffalo stack too. I think there I'm it is. Conklin, you get Conklin and Knox in there. Nobody's doing that. No, I see. Um, 
All right. Well, hey, man, it's good to be with you again. Uh, I will be live. I know you're not going to be there uh, Sunday morning. Sheets and I will be live at 11 a.m. Eastern. We might invite Goldie, our man, over to, to come and join us. And uh, yeah, man, let's have another great week. Let's get it, man.